So again, just to recap, here are a bunch of different of squares. We take any number and we can square. Any, any number you take, you can square. Because squaring it is just multiplying it by itself. So 5 squared is equal to 25. 7 squared is equal to 49. 9 squared equals 81. 11 squared equals 121. And 13 squared equals 169. If you want to take it back down to its original source, what we call its root, then you have to take what's called the square root. So the square root of 25 is equal to 5. 5 is the root. The square root of 49 is equal to 7. Go ahead and write that, Katie. And we'll do the rest of them. Please write them down in your books. Square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 121 is 11. And the square root of 169 is 13. The word radical, does anybody know what the word radical means? Totally awesome. Well, that's one, that's one example of how we use the word radical. But what about the root of the word radical? Does anybody know what it is? Yes, tall? That's like the square root of something. Yeah, well, actually, it's radis, and it's Latin, and it means root. And again, that's just in numbers, it's just what we just did. We started with 5. We went 5 squared. We got 25. We asked ourselves, how do we take it back to the root? Well, you take the square root of it, and you get 5. Or the square root of 49, 7, etc. As you know, there are also cube roots and, and fourth roots and things like that, but for now, we're just going to deal with this, just for now. Is there only one square root of 81? Yeah. Who says there's only one? Put up your hand. Oh, no. Is there, who says there's two? Okay, somebody's not voting, but that's right. There are two. What are the two roots? Negative 9 and negative 9. Yes, the two roots are negative 9 and positive 9. Because positive 9 times positive 9 equals 81. And negative 9 times negative 9 equals 81. Because, don't put, because negative 9 times negative 9 equals 81. And 9 times 9 equals 81. Those, that's the reason. Because if you take a negative number and multiply it by itself, in other words, a negative times a negative, then you have a positive 81. And you need to have a positive in your radical sign. In a minute, you're going to see why, because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So, so this is a real simple example of why you get two roots. So now we're going to talk about rational and irrational numbers. First, I want to write an example of uh, a definition of real numbers. The real numbers consist of rational numbers and irrational numbers. Real numbers consist of rational numbers and irrational numbers. So please write that down. Real numbers consist of rational numbers and irrational So let's go over these examples. Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as the ratio of two integers, a over b, where a and b are integers. So a could be negative 3 and b could be 6. You're going to have negative 1 half. That is a rational number. Real numbers are both rational and irrational numbers. And irrational numbers cannot be written a over b, where a and B are integers. The best thing to understand these things is with examples. So we're going to do some examples right now. These are your basic, um, basic exam basic uh, definitions, which should help you. But let's go over some examples. So can anybody think of a rational number right now? We've already done one. We talked about a half. Two. Rational numbers. Three, four. Okay. Rational number two would be one because two over one. One half is one. It, again, one over two. Three quarters is one. Let's do rational numbers. Let's give some examples of rational numbers. What about the root of 25? Root of 25, put up here rational numbers. Other ones, do we have any other rational numbers? How about negative root 36? Would that be rational or irrational? We'll put negative root 36. Would that be rational or irrational? Yes. Yes, it would be rational, why? Yes, ne negative root, square root, 36 equals negative 6. That's rational, right? Because negative 6 over 1. So sometimes you have to take it a step. Okay, let's look at irrational numbers and talk about those. Okay, irrational numbers are decimals, decimals that don't repeat, right? Decimals that don't repeat. Decimals that don't repeat. See, in these examples, like 3 quarters equals 0.75, it's done. It's just 0.75, the decimal stops going. All right, now, here's an example of an irrational number, and here's why. Irrational numbers don't repeat. You take the decimal, when you take the irrational number, square root of 35 in your calculator, 
you get 5.9160797 dot 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 and the dot 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 means that the decimal keeps going and going and going and going and it never repeats. Uh, rational numbers are decimals that stop or repeat. They stop or repeat. I don't get it. Okay, well basically look at 2 over 1. It stops. It's not even a decimal. It's like 2.0. That's a rational number. One third is 0.3333. It goes on and on and on forever, but it repeats. The 3 repeats. So it's a rational number. One half equals 0 0.5. It stops. That's it. 0.5 is the end of the story. You can put 0 0.50, but it's the same thing. It stops, so it's a rational number. Negative root 36 is equal to negative 6. It stops. It's a rational number. Uh, irrational numbers are different. When you go ahead and take the square root of 35 in your calculator, read it, it'll be 5.9160797878, etc. You're talking about something that doesn't repeat. You can't get a handle on it. It's basically random, if you want to think of it that way. These are random. There's never a repeating pattern at all. Uh, square root of 23, 4.7958, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The numbers, you can't predict them. You don't know what they're going to be. So they're random and they don't repeat. These are irrational numbers. Okay? Any other questions?